Hey everyone, welcome to the latest installment of The Way It Is. I'm your host, Luke Anofato, uh, with Team Luca First at Remax Service First Realty uh, here in Kingston. And okay, I'll do the obligatory. If you like what you see, click the like button, ring the bell, do all that kind of social media stuff that you're supposed to do. I'm really fortunate today to have a, um, a guest with me, uh, but, but sort of last minute and sort of not, but Jeff Henry, who's the newly appointed COO of Sustainable Kingston, um, has, uh, has graciously uh, agreed to join us and 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 that it's timely because uh if anybody unless you're living under literally a rock um and you listen to some some news you're going to know that uh, globally cop 27 is happening uh which is the global uh climate symposium or i guess uh, conference that uh, is happening in egypt right now and so you know obviously climate change is top of mind i mean i know there's big ticket items like afford housing affordability and the economy and and uh, given the weather today and the gloom and doom, we thought maybe we'll talk about something hopefully a little bit more optimistic. So, Jeff, thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. So, but you've been with Sustainable Kingston uh, for some time prior to the um, your appointment as yeah. CEO, right? So what, how, how did you start into Sustainable Kingston? How did well, I, I was actually working with uh, Loving Spoonful um, not long after I moved to Kingston. And uh, with uh, with Loving Spoonful, worked with lots of organizations, including Sustainable Kingston, so built a relationship. And then when there was an opportunity to to work with them in a business development role, I, I jumped at that chance. Uh, and then worked in uh, other capacities and communications and business development. And then eventually the opportunity to, to take over as COO uh, came about. And so I was happy to, to do so. Well, that's awesome. And, and Loving Spoonful is a is a terrible organization that I support. I, I I sponsored the night market, which is a, a great event. And we were mm -hmm. fortunate to have it in person again this year. So mm -hmm. now um, sustainable Kingston has sort of six key target areas here. Uh, sustainable transportation, economic prosperity, climate action, sense of community, environmental stewardship, food security. Um, I, I guess, you know, I don't want to get too down into the weeds, but can you talk to speak to sort of each one of those and just sort of maybe give a highlight or something in terms of what the role is for sustainable Kingston and how are you sort of implementing these things in the community? Sure. I think maybe the best way to describe what we do is to, um, to all the, the, those priority areas are kind of a lens that we, we, uh, we look through when we do our, our core programs and essentially we do three different things. We have, uh, a service level agreement with the city of Kingston to do um, uh, community focused uh, sustainability initiatives, campaigns, events, things like our upcoming Kingston Climate Change Symposium, which is taking place on uh, January 19th of 2023, mm -hmm. our pitch in event, our webinars, working closely with schools and, and community groups. Uh, so we do that. That's number one. And then number two, we have our sustainably.eco program where we work with businesses and organizations to help them reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, and that actually expands beyond Kingston. And we have uh, members in between Belleville all the way to Cornwall uh, up to um, Lanark County. And then our third uh, program that we we um, is fairly new. Uh, we merged with, uh, or through an asset transfer agreement specifically, uh, with Red Squirrel Conservation Services about a year ago. Hmm. And so we now work very closely with the city of Kingston on their Better Homes Kingston program. Yep. And we also provide home energy audits for uh, homeowners looking to um, uh, access a Canada Greener Homes grant. So we're, we're providing the audit that allows you to go to back to those granting agencies and say, hey, We've uh, uh, an experts check this out, and we think that if we do these number of things to our home, we can reduce our carbon footprint, our GHG emissions by twenty five percent, and then thus qualify for the grant. So that's a huge part of what we do now, the energy services, um, and it's been very very successful transition, um, and that, that's sort of the third component. So all those activities that I mentioned, those core programs. Um, all of them touch on our prior those right, six priority right. areas in some way. Yeah, well, and 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 I, um, I mean, on the was on the site and and saw that one of the team members is Cedric, and I I won't say, I, I won't say his last name in case I mispronounce it because he was a guest uh, with uh, and now I've forgotten the chap's name from the city of Kingston who oh, okay. was uh, spearheading the oh, uh, better home. Yes, yeah, Soren Christian. Thank you, and thank you, Cedric Pepelea. Yeah, yeah Pepelea. You see, I was going to say. That. So yeah, no, I had them on to explain the whole program or at least talk through it and and and. Uh, I guess um, it's gone. It's been received way better than. 
than they anticipated and they've already filled the four years of commitments i guess or or potential um candidates i guess for the for the program i think yeah so, so the city of kingston uh, has paused the program as far as pause applications not paused the program but paused applications and um just to catch up and with the uh, existing um uh, the existing applicants. And, uh, and so that's exciting. And, um, I, I think the hopes are that we'll be able to continue the program in, in some way, although, um, that's, uh, that's for the city to announce. So, so I guess that, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, the takeaway from that is that there seems to be an appetite for members of the Kingston community and the citizenship to want to practice climate change, or at least try to be more energy efficient or sustainable, correct? Yeah. Well, particularly with, energy efficiency in their homes and so uh, through the better homes kingston program as you say we've we've um where i think there's a 497 applicants um uh you know i think the hope was that we'd have a hundred with by the year's end and we've you know uh quadrupled that sir more than that quintupled it the what our experience also though from working with uh, applicants to the uh, Canada Greener Homes Grant is is the same. I mean, we've we, our auditors are now booked into late January, um, so and we have a, a big waiting list. So uh, yeah, all across the board, and whether folks are doing that because gas prices are going through the roof and they want to you know, just be more cost conscious, or they want to reduce their carbon footprint, or they want to do both. But regardless, there's that that appetite, um, and I, it doesn't look like uh, you know I had a staff member ask you know what do you anticipate with the recession, and so far all things point to this trend continuing that people will mm -hmm. want to continue to do that because it, again it makes sense financially and it makes sense from a you know an environmental standpoint certainly no question i mean obviously not to sound too cynical but obviously yes energy efficiency is self-serving and they want to conserve co or at least you know reduce costs and everything and I, I guess it's just a great positive byproduct if if they can be sustainable at the same mm -hmm. reduce their carbon footprint at the same time but you're you know and and uh, you know interesting point but recession aside or i guess economic climate aside i think those that are participating are homeowners they're they're probably some of them um tenured homeowners uh, i don't know your demographic I'm, I'm just making assumptions here but i would hazard a guess that they're you know tenured homeowners and everything and have equity in their homes and and now are in a position where if you've been in there several years or whatever and now you know maybe it's time to to improve upon and you might as well try to get paid while you're improving it right mm -hmm. at the same time so um let's um let's talk about this uh this climate symposium um mm -hmm. and, and this is because there was one last year too was there not is this the second now of or has it been going on all along and and this is like number 10 or something um like i think we're i that's a good question I, I i think we're number six or seven i should i should uh should clarify that but yeah this is, will be our um i guess our second um completely digital Okay. Uh, online. Uh, and so last year's was a huge success. We had over 700 re registrants and then another 1,500 uh, views on our on the YouTube channel as well. And it was great because last year, uh, in particular, it coincided with a, a lockdown. And so there were a lot of kids that mm -hmm. were home from school. And so we were able to provide some really great um, educational content for teachers that were struggling to find online resources right uh and it was really cool to have the number of students participated it was just a jolt of electricity to the event and so it was a big success um and it, it has been a success since we moved it digitally i think we might move well no promises but we, we might move back to in person next mm -hmm. year we'll see how it goes but the digital experience the online uh, symposium has been great so this year we have our keynote speaker is uh, the Honorable Catherine McKenna, right? Um, and uh, who, of course, is the former Environment Minister and uh, for climate change. Um, uh, Paul Taylor is another speaker who is a longtime activist and the executive director of Food Share. He'll be speaking about food security, which again is one mm -hmm. of our priority areas. Um, and uh, we're going to have a panel as we always do, and it's uh, all hosted by uh, Ali Hassan, who is a yeah. well-known, uh, yeah. hilarious, but also uh, incredibly gifted broadcaster and a comedian actor he does about he just wrote a book so he does about he's the king of all media in canada yeah no i'm a fan of ali hassan actually and that's why when i i, I you know on I saw the feeds last year uh, about it and then saw it again this year. So is, is the format that it's uh, obviously if it's digital, then everybody's just 
in the audience and then it's just the speakers that go ahead and speak or is there any interaction or anything like that or there's a, there's an opportunity for q a for sure um but uh yeah it's ultimately it's it's um listening to people speak it's free i for, always forget to mention that but yeah, yeah it's free to anyone who wants to participate um and you can register at sustainablekingston.com good and and so you know um speaking about climate change and um because it is more top of mind and it is or seemingly i guess uh is is top of mind with the younger demographic right i mean we're i, I guess gen z's or 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 younger and i, I can't even speak to what the age yeah. group that is <laughs> i get confused with all of them but um that seems to be you know and, and even during the municipal elections you heard the sound bites that um it was that younger generation those yeah the younger demographic that this was actually if not at the top tied for the top with housing or housing affordability or some of those other issues and maybe speak to that what's what's your take on that or or how yeah well it's interesting because actually if you go to a climate march um uh you know the climate demonstration um uh in kingston you will see a wide range of ages but you will see a lot of energy from seniors there's a group of really dedicated seniors in um Kingston specifically, who have been, um, who have been really the the flag bearers for the climate movement in Kingston. Um, so yes, obviously, you know, huge student participation, um, and you know, there have been climate strikes. We've awarded a youth sustainability award at our, our Kingston climate, uh, excuse me, our Kingston uh, our sustainable Kingston awards for the past several years, and many of them have been involved in the Fridays for Future. Um, activism, but yeah, I, I do want to shout out to the the group of seniors that have been really at um, very active, specifically in this in this region. Well, that's 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 awesome to hear, and, and who knows, maybe it's because of a care for concern for their grandchildren or something, or or leaving the planet in a in a position where their grandchildren or the youngers can can certainly uh, inherit something that's uh, obviously more sustainable or yeah, at least, uh, yeah, has some longevity. Um, what i mean you know the the knock of 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 climate change of course is that it it you have to i guess square it with real life and 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 how to operate in real life vis-a-vis -vis, you know cars that still operate on fossil fuels and 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 you know the need for that energy and and everything else so uh, you know how, I guess for me, you know, I know it's, there's a lot of people that pay a lot of lip service to climate change and, and sustainability, and yet it's the practical uh, implementation of it. So what, I guess, speak to that and also maybe speak to how some people who feel that it's just not worth trying, like what are, how, how does someone start, I guess, and, and make it, make it worthwhile, I guess. Sure. Or, yeah, I think, I mean, the number one, you know, it's a cliche about what we measure, we manage, right? And so there's right now, there's a ton of online tools where you can actually go and punch in your lifestyle, how, you know, the number of kilometers you drive to work every day, you know, maybe what you eat, and, and they'll give you a pretty good estimate of what your, your personal carbon footprint is. Uh, there's also a lot of information about what, you know, what, uh, what activities, you know, are more detrimental to the climate than, than others. Um, and then, you know, when you go through, when you take an inventory of what you do, it can be alarming at first. You're like, oh, geez, this is a really big number. <laughs> but then you think, well, what, what can you do? And like, well, let's see, you know, eating, you know, eating meat can be, can be a big one. Uh, I'm not a, a strict vegetarian, but we've reduced. We we know our, we've got a new policy in our house. We no longer buy meat at the grocery store. Hmm. Might order it at a restaurant, go to grandma's, and she you know makes a turkey. Then we we'll eat the turkey. Um, right. And this is just our own personal yeah. you know yeah. approach. I I you know um, th this isn't. Uh, <laughs> I, I commend any vegan out there that that that's taking this to you know to do the the ultimate disciplined level. Um, but you know so but it's it, you can make these incremental changes. Um, you know I we moved recently and um, and this isn't the same for everyone in Kingston. You, you know, not everyone lives in a great. Um, bus route, but I can get downtown to my office at, at uh, the Seaway Coworking in 10 minutes on a bus. It is so convenient. Mm. We do, we, you know, we, we do have one car. Um, we're on the wait list for an electric vehicle. 
Um, but, uh, you know, we, we thought, well, the kids are getting bigger. Do we need two cars? We don't want two cars. And I've, you know, love Kingston Transit. And mm -hmm. I take Kingston Transit or I walk almost every day. Wow. And I love it. And it's quick and it's efficient. So, um, you know, it's not, there's some things that are harder to do than others. You know, uh, we just moved. We'd love to, to transition to a cold climate heat pump. And I think we will. Maybe that's not right away. But you just take, you you know, you, you I think it's important to look at your inventory and then get the low, you know, take care of the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a big deal for us to to make those changes to our menu. It wasn't a big deal for me to get a bus pass and jump on the bus every every day mm -hmm. to work or, or it's a 15, 20 minute walk. It's great. It's good exercise. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and some things are harder than others, but yeah, take care of the low hanging fruit, figure out what's the, making the greatest contribution to your GHG impact and start there. I hope that's helpful. I don't know. No, no. I, that, that, and you know, it, it, and you're, you know, and again, not to sound cliche, I guess, uh, uh, but it, it, I guess it all starts with us as individuals, right? If everybody started to make a plan and simply sit at home and say, okay, I'm going to measure my carbon footprint. And as you say, if everybody even just took some of the low hanging fruit off, I'm sure that would, if everyone did that, that would result in something that would be significant, I, I dare say, right? So Yeah, and my my feeling, and I, I mean, just to personalize it a bit, I, you know, I go, like a lot of people, I go through periods where I exercise and uh, periods where I don't. When I exercise, I eat better because I say, well, look, I just ran, you know, I don't, know, I don't run that far, but anyway, <laughs> 5K this morning, I'm not going to have you know, a milkshake tonight because I just ran. Like, yeah. I don't want to, you know, I don't yeah. want to. I just, and so the more you sort of engage in sustainable activity, the more you think, well, it just, it's a bit of a snowball, you know? And you think, well, look, I'm, I'm going all this effort to reduce my carbon footprint. What's this company that I, you know, shop at every week? What are they doing? Right. You know, uh, is there another company that's doing better work? Right. That's, uh, you know, and like, and then you start thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to shop there anymore. I'm going to shop at these guys. You know, right. they're making the right the, the right decisions with regards to the they maybe they've got their fleets gone electric or that they've um, you know, they've renovated their spaces so they're more energy efficient, whatever it might be. Um, so I do think you start and then it becomes a snowball and then our hope is that as a, a voter, you know, you 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 prioritize climate action higher than you maybe you did before because again, mm -hmm. you're you're going to all this work. Yep. You know, what what's what's uh you know what what are you, the candidates that you're potentially supporting, or what are they going to do? Yeah. Um. And so I think it just becomes something that you just again sort of view your life through the lenses of you know the of climate action, and and it just becomes a bigger priority. And 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 then speaking to that, because you know the analogy would be no different than someone who says, "Okay, I'm going to have a New Year's resolution. I want to get more fit, or I want to exercise." Mm -hmm. You know, practicing good climate change sustainable practices is a mindset too, right? I mean, it's it takes it's work, right? At the end of the day, it, it's, a, it's a conscious decision to do those things, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you and, and you just can't do them you know half assed or <laughs> sporadically or anything else um there's the one thing though you do offer for um for businesses to do an online carbon uh, i guess accounting or whatever themselves what, what's been the response of of local businesses for that that and then, uh, and you said it's outside the community as well so yeah uh, yeah give us a yeah let us know how that how's how's that being received obviously and so. sure uh so the, it's the sustainably dot eco program and so when a member becomes a part of that program uh we provide a, a carbon footprint analysis so we look at your energy bills uh we if it's if we can we do a walkthrough um of the space and uh, we basically provide a benchmarking report and say, well, this is your current GHG emissions. Um, and then we work with the businesses um, to uh, help them reduce their carbon footprint. So uh, whether we assist with granting um, opportunities, um, we uh, maybe you know offer advice with regards if they think they can you know add a solar panel or, or something along those lines. Um, and or if they want to engage their staff through a green team initiative. And so the program has expanded over the even over the pandemic. We thought we would, we would really struggle, and um, I would say that through the pandemic, a lot of businesses just did not either. They were closed, right? They weren't. Right. You know, we have a lot of hospitality businesses, and and they were. You know, well, everyone was struggling. 
Um, but yeah, it, it, the, the, uh, there's many members um, that have just gone above and beyond. Um, Weller Pharmacy, for example, Trailhead, um, uh, J.E. Agnew. Um, there's a, a number of the 60 businesses that we work with that have, um, that have just gone above and beyond and, and shown a tremendous amount of initiative. And again, just to go back to the, you know, the exercise gym analogy, it's, it's a little bit of, you know, you, you get out of it what you put in, right. Yeah, and, yeah. um, we're like a personal trainer, as much as you want to come in and, and work out, we're there. Um, and so we're excited about, we're going to relaunch the program in 2023, provide perhaps additional services, um, rejig our pricing a little bit, change the way we've done things a little bit to maybe modernize things and, um, a sort of a post pandemic, uh, help with the post pandemic recovery while still supporting everyone in their, their sustainability goals. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, as an individual, you touched on some of the immediate things someone can do, um, for a business, it's a little bit different, obviously. What can you speak to? What are some of the, what's the low hanging fruit for a small business, for instance, and then especially those that are in leased premises, which is really not their building or their space to uh, improve or or maybe offer capital yeah. investments into, right? So, well, you you bring up a good point, and that's kind of the a little bit of the final. That's kind of the final frontier a little bit um, because we've we, what we you know we found when we started the the program businesses would come to us and say we don't know where to start help us out and so we'd be suggesting well you know you lease your space but you can change the light bulbs and you can do you know think about reusable bags well the businesses that are coming to us now like harlow green or the keep refillery they've already changed the light bulbs they've done they're they've got a sustainable business plan going in and so really the next step for a lot of those businesses that lease their space is that we need to work collectively with property owners um, and multi-residential uh, buildings, um, but but you know commercial buildings, uh, to start talking about um, transitioning away from um, oil and gas, mm -hmm. um, and you know cold climate heat pumps, and the work that needs to be done to make your space energy efficient, and. Um, you know we're we're in a position now, particularly after our merger, that we you know we we have uh, we're a better position to help um, find um, grants or financial support for that kind of work. Um, but that's something that we we had we tried in the past, but you know it's it had to some difficulty. And I think going forward, that's where we really want to make a big difference. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good to know. Um, and Harlow Green, they're fantastic. I mean, they're a client, actually. Oh, are they? Okay, at least, yeah. At least in the space that they're in. So, yeah. Oh, great. And they just expanded, which is great, which is testament to the the great business model that they have. And, and uh, you know, obviously, I wish them every success. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I, I won't keep you much longer. And I, and I, I know because your time, like everybody's, is is, uh, is valuable. And, uh, um, and, and maybe we'll just segue to big picture now with this cop 27 symposium mm -hmm. and and um you know personal opinion aside or whether you have to give the political opinion uh, what's your what's your what's your take on the cop 27 in these global symposiums do they even achieve anything is it just politicians being politicians because mm -hmm. i mean i think I know from an outs from my personal observation, I'm a bit of a political, and I I, I do follow politics relatively closely, uh, and and I get annoyed by a lot of the sound bites. I get I get discouraged and 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 sometimes not only frustrated but just angry mm -hmm. at, at what you hear and and the comments and and everything. So, how much of what happens out there at that level? even filters down or has an effect what, what comments on that well uh i mean i've certainly never attended uh like a global yeah. conference to that scale uh so but in, in you can probably speak to this too i mean there's real value in getting being in a room with um depending on who you are right i mean and one of the things that struck me i think one of the real takeaways or sound bites that was really resonated with a lot of people in at COP26, I think, mm -hmm. uh, was um, some of these small island nations that ha were incredibly passionate about their future um, and cl climate change and rising sea levels. And so, you know, there, there are those moments from these global events that can translate and can really change people's perspective. So I think, you know, if you are, uh, I mean, I, I'm not in any position to, <laughs> 
to speak on behalf of the the, the global south. But but yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, you have an opportunity to um, again be in the room with people that you might want to be in the room with, uh, and then also to um, depending on who you are. Um, perhaps get a seat at the table or a, a voice or an opportunity to amplify your message that might otherwise be difficult to be heard. And again, that, that, that those island nations come to mind. I, you know, didn't consider, you know, these tiny countries, but when they talked about the very real prospect of their countries, you know, um, being, being swallowed by the Pacific ocean and mm -hmm. you're, you know, um, so I think that those moments are really important. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it can be frustrating and, I, um, and, and certainly it's interesting that fewer world leaders are at this particular event in Egypt than yeah. in the past. Um, but, uh, I bet for, there'll be a lot of people that have gone to COP 27 in Egypt and come back with a partnership or a, uh, opt sense of optimism that maybe they didn't have going in. Yeah. And, and, you know, sadly, uh, you know, it's these more prevalent climate, climatic events that are occurring now that seem to sort of be the dose of reality that, that, that everybody needs to sort of, you know, wake up and smell the coffee, so to speak, in terms of mm -hmm. <laughs> we need action now, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's not uh, it's not a hoax. It's not uh, as as a certain presidential candidate again now yeah. might uh, might offer up and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a real thing, and and it's a you know again, it's a classic case of the world now has to pay for all the sins of it before, right? I yeah. And um, that's it, from a global scale to right down to a micro, you know, a mm -hmm. community scale. It, we're, we're all paying for the sins of the, of, of the past. Right. So, and, and, and what people practices and everything else. Right. But that's the evolution of, uh, of it. And, and we learn as we go. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, that's great, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. And, and uh, I hope we shed some, uh, some light and, and, and open some eyes to sustainable Kingston and your programs, uh, especially businesses, and 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 hopefully maybe we've motivated and activated some uh, some people to uh, to start in better practices at home and everything. So thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. And I would just say, I mean, just to leave on an optimistic note, um, you know, there, there's so much activity that's happening that's uh, a source of optimism. I mean solar uh, globally has gone down by about 90 percent um you're seeing you know again t talking about locally the number of people that are lining up to retrofit their homes to you know uh, um buildings in, K in kingston make up uh, about 41 percent of our you know regional ghg right. pie piece of the pie right you know and so um yeah. So thank you again for having me and anyone that would like more information to contact, uh, contact me or, or reach out to um, info at sustainablekingston.com. Yeah, no, no, that's awesome. We'll post the links on, on our site and, and that's awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Luca. Mm -hmm.